talking about boycotting things. I don't officially do like a boycott, but there actually is something I am purposefully not going to watch hmm. on purpose. Okay. That I originally had thought I might watch, but I have decided I will not watch it. Hmm. Hulu's movie about Mike Tyson called Mike. Why? Wow. They not only didn't consult with Mike Tyson, they not only didn't get permission from Mike Tyson, they not only had him not contribute to the story of his own life, but he's not getting a cent. And he's pretty pissed off about it. And I like Mike Tyson, so I'm not going to support that film because... Hulu should have been done right by you're telling the movie of a person's life. You should at the very least have run it by them and given them some, they're going to make money off of it because it's his life and no Mike for Mike. And he's hurting financially. We all know it. Hey. Josh! Hey, we'll go back to our stupid Rex. I'm Mike Tyson. <laughs> yes, you're Mike Tyson. Would you like that? What? Someone made yes. a movie about you. Yes. Didn't consult you. Yes. Didn't ask you for your permission. Yeah. And didn't give you a cent. Oh, I love it. And it's called Corbin. That's a hot name. You'd be cool with that. Ugh, I'd be horny. Liar. Anyway. <laughs> Total liar. <laughs> Uh, today we got an Amir Khan interview. He just did this interview uh, with. Uh, is he in the news recently? I don't no. know. Is he promoting something? No. Oh, uh, he's with Barajwaj Rangan. That's who's interviewing him. Got it. Um, and so he's. Uh, this is obviously about the Lao Singh Chaudhary. And so obviously, a lot of people sent this to me. Said it's a really good interview. He goes over a lot um, of stuff, uh, and it's really. This exciting. is nice. It's not. So. I so. Um. Has he always done press junkets for the films to promote and done some interviews? Because it's my understanding he's not a big fan of doing interviews and he doesn't go to award shows. But he does. I mean, obviously, this is his to, film. To promote his films, he'll do that. But just like a standalone interview in between films, he has nothing to promote. He's typically not going to do typically anything. Not, yeah. yeah. Here we go. Hi. Welcome to Hi. Hi. Thank yeah. you. So this he looks is great, by the way. Real beard. This is by and large a real beard. So what you see from the coming of the skin is all real. So I had grown my own beard. Then we wanted a bit of length and, you know, so we added some uh, uh, extensions and all that. Yeah. Okay. So, well, uh, this is a little bit of an ageist question. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, one time you're the heartthrob of the nation. Mm -hmm. QSQT is happening. You and Juhi Chawla. You and all the young heroes, Neelam. Mm -hmm. You know, there's this whole bunch of people. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, now suddenly you're this... Like this, uh, you know, this defining person whose every film becomes this thing that that something that people wait for. You're kind of this uh, elder statesman if one one wants to kind of. Oh. this. doesn't sit well on my shoulders. But you know what I mean. Yeah, it's also like, an elder kind of statesman. Heck yeah. Like, uh, uh, you know that 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 at one time you're doing all these romantic roles and mm. you know having fun and then now you're. This is probably a romantic like, role. Instance, you know, if it's for like, it's gone. Um, yeah, uh, you know the father mm. or the you know like like a kind of a senior kind, and, and there's also more responsibility on your shoulders because the the films that you've chosen Raw, have also become more I wouldn't say serious necessarily. Mm. No, yeah, but, they're not but, serious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I'm hoping but, they're entertaining. Yeah, yeah, they're very entertaining. Mm. No, and serious does not mean not yeah, entertaining. Yeah, yeah. But but they've also become more how do I put it uh, hefty mm. uh, in terms of uh, uh, you know what they say as opposed to camera say camera. Are you talking part. of uh, Tugs of Hindustan? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I love that he jokes <laughs> about it. <laughs> no, if you want to talk about Tugs of Hindustan. No, no, I'd rather not. Yeah, okay, all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, you know, it's it's been a journey and actually, to be quite honest, uh, as a person who started, uh, you know, quite young, I started as the age of 18. Those glasses look great on him. joined my uncle as an assistant. So my journey is, has actually started from there and quite honestly, I'm 57 now. I was 18, so in one more year, I'll, I would have completed 40 years in the industry. Yeah. Not as an actor, but in the industry, I would have completed 40 years because I worked for four years as an assistant first. So it's right. been, I think, 35 years almost now. And uh, I still feel that I do not feel that way. What you're describing is not how I feel. Yeah. I feel like I'm still very much 18 years old and I'm still excited about what I'm making and we're just trying to get it right. Yeah. That's all we're doing. Yeah. We're just trying to get, we're trying to be honest to the story and the material and the script and try to you know, bring it out 
एज वेल एज इट कैन बस हम वही कर रहे हैं और उसमें क्या ईच फिल्म इज चैलेंजिंग ईच फिल्म इज अव फिल्म ईच फिल्म यू लर्न समथिंग न्यू एंड एवरी फिल्म इज कम्स विद न्यू सेट ऑफ चैलेंजेस Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, you're never the master. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I feel. Yeah. No matter how experienced you get, unless you're in a certain shop. Uh, yes. Lal Singh Jinda, as you rightly pointed out, I've been working for 35 years. After having worked for 35 years, I should find it reasonably comfortable to do a film. Yeah. It's very difficult. <laughs> Advait, you know, as a director, I mean, I hats off to him how he's taken this film and really, you know, brought it to show. Probably been my toughest film. Right. Yeah. Right. right, right. Most challenging film. Yeah. part of the question was also addressed to me because you know when i was in school uh kamal se kamal tak was a I blockbuster okay. and it was running for 25 weeks and yeah. stuff like that yeah, so yeah, yeah. like it just now it feels like you know that that like i'm still in school yeah it's like just like you say you feel just like eighteen i feel like oh my god where does time where does time go where does time go yeah you know you suddenly like oh my god i'm interviewing amir khan yeah. this yesterday it seemed like i saw him in camera the camera mm-hmm. like that was in the partly address yeah. as well yeah sure you, know, no, you, you grow you know when mm-hmm. when you kind of grow with an actor mm-hmm. over, over the ages it took you a long time to acquire the rights, rights yeah, for yeah. this for this uh, for eight years yeah about eight years mm-hmm. so you stuck to it i mean what, yeah. what took so much time was it the negotiations or no <laughs> well you know it's not nice to go into the details right but we approached paramount of course which is the company that owns the original uh, who has made the original right right and uh, initially um, i was not able to you know they said you can take any rights from us to remake because this is the com- concern viacom was actually helping us i'm talking of 14 years ago and uh, there was a different management then right. not only in paramount but also in viacom at that time for some reason it wasn't working out but i being the kind of person i am i persevered i went and met various people i flew to germany to berlin and met spielberg with the hope that he might put in a word to uh, you know mr zemeckis they were very close But anyway, it took us around eight years finally when 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 we were given the rights. But something told you I want to make this film. Well, I had never. I mean, I've seen Forrest Gump in '94 when it came out. Right. I saw it in the theaters. I remember loving it, so I saw it a couple of times, uh, in a short span. I had never imagined you can make this into a Hindi film. I had never imagined. And when Atul and I <coughs> met, and he is a close friend, Atul Kulkarni, uh, who's an actor, and he and I did Rangde Basanti together. Mm-hmm. So exactly 14 years ago, in fact, 14 years and a month. So a little more than 14 years ago, it was in the month. As we are in August, it was in July, 8th of July, if I'm not mistaken, to be precise. It was the uh, premiere of a film that I had produced called Jaane To Ya Jaane Na, mm-hmm. and we invited the whole industry and all of that. At the end of that night, a few of us were sitting in my house, and that Atul was one of them. And we started discussing about films, and he said, "What is your favorite film?" And I said, "One of them is Forrest Gump." The conversation got over. I forgot about it. Two weeks later, he calls me up and says that uh, I've written a script for you. So I said, "But you're not a writer." <laughs> he said, "Yeah, I've given it a shot." I said, "Okay." He said, "I said, what have you written?" He said, "I've written an Indian adaptation of Forrest Gump." I said, "What?" In two weeks, he said, "Yeah." <laughs> he said, "My schedule got cancelled. I was supposed to go the next day after we spoke. The next day, I was going for an outdoor. It got cancelled. So I was at home. I sat down and wrote it." So I didn't have high hopes from what he had written. <laughs> <laughs> For some time I was busy. I said, "Ham." Makes sense. Yeah. But since I was not having too much hopes, I was not really following up with him. Rather, he was following up with me. And actually, what happened is when I heard the script, that's when I realized that that's when I started. That's so interesting. Because when I heard the adaptation, two yeah. weeks of an adaptation of Forrest Gump, I wouldn't have just confidence either. But when, when he heard it, when he had it like a table read of it, I said, "Oh, I have to, I have to do this." Uh, so at that time I wasn't thinking that you know oh my god you're taking a classic and you're trying to remake it yeah. I didn't even think of that I just thought that here is the material and I've loved it and I don't know how Atul has done this but now what I'm hearing to me it feels like an Indian film that's mm. how good the adaptation is good I would have not even known that this is an American film you know if you if I had not seen that it's a new film for me great so I said I want to do this and then the Journey began of trying to get the yeah, rights right, and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, so it took us a while. So one of the things that Forrest Gump really did to America mm-hmm. was was when it was released, was present a very idealized version of, mm-hmm. of America that 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 you didn't because in a way Tom the Tom Hanks character mm-hmm. Forrest Gump represents mm-hmm. his America like mm-hmm. you know like 
that you don't need to be cutthroat or super intelligent or super talented to succeed mm. you can be very basically decent and kind hearted uh, and, and and simple and and nice yeah. and if you have core human values and also succeed do you believe in that personally i do i do and i think that is one of the things that attracts me to this material is that it's a story where we are used to watching our heroes and our protagonists have different kinds of strengths right. some of them are physically strong uh like the avenger series you know these uh, they are physically strong like right. uh, sometimes your hero is moral has got moral strength he fights for the underprivileged or he fights for okay. people's rights but here is a hero who doesn't fight he doesn't have any great physical strength and doesn't even know he's a hero <laughs> yeah he just is a simple guy who's yep. very innocent and he's very pure of heart he doesn't have any negativity and i wanted people to experience the power of innocence yeah. i'm using the word power it's not the way i want to use yeah. it yeah but innocence brings so much with it right that you don't need power after that you know that's what i felt and this story really tells you that it's a very it's a very positive film it makes you believe it makes you believe in the goodness of people it makes you believe in your own goodness right right you know it touches the good in you yeah and that's what i like about the the material i touched so, the good in your mom uh, in your original, nice uh, tom hanks is a southerner a mm. southern american he's from alabama mm. what made it feel right that this character should oh, be oh sorry uh, i thought they were literally saying Sikh. tom hanks yeah. was from well actually atul <laughs> lenders and actually had already placed him as a Sikh and all of that was already in place when we received it as a as a script we were already reading a Sikh character we were already you know he was part of that script and so it was felt very natural to us right. so none of us questioned why is he a Sikh it was very organic to us yeah. but now that i think about it it's probably atul probably placed him as a sikh because technically he could be anyone it could yeah. be a south indian it yeah. could be any character yeah. Yeah. very rightly said but i think atul did that because in our timeline of uh, you know recent socio political history in 83 84 that was a very key time that was a very uh, difficult time i would say you know and and the sikh community went through a lot of uh difficulties at that time so by placing became making him a sikh i think what atul was trying to do and he did that i think rather well is that he gives uh by making the lead character a sikh you're actually investing your emotions very strongly in the character in the incident and then from there when the film goes on you know you're I think that's why he made it a Sikh character. Okay. I think nice. so. Now there was a time when Pan India cinema basically meant Hindi cinema. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know movies like Aradhana and Yaron ki Barat and Yaron Kam Te Kam Tak as I just said had silver jubilee runs in Chennai. Uh, mm-hmm. You know there were the songs were hugely popular. Mm-hmm. But now this this some kind of little bit of a reverse thing mm-hmm. is happening. Mm-hmm. Do you sense is this as a movement or is it too early to comment on anything? uh it's certainly a movement and i think that uh uh it won't may, it it may not be a like a thick solid movement how we are imagining it right but i feel that with covid coming in with people not going to theaters or rather they could not go to theaters and so they were consuming entertainment at home through otts and other platforms and as a result all of us ended up seeing content from other languages right? mm-hmm. you know after some time we started consuming content from other languages which we heard about which yeah. we heard was good and that is something new that happened you know suddenly i was also watching different languages films yeah. and so similarly the hindi audience had started watching i think uh films from the south and 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 enjoying them liking the characters liking the action you know and i think in that time when these films came out you know it was all of that put together right and of course uh, i've not seen uh, you know rrr as yet but these were films that got to watch it amazing it very deeply right with an audience and really entertain them because otherwise you can't have this kind of success is a huge success yeah, yeah yeah uh so it's it's really nice to see that a hindi audience is now open <laughs> for con- because i used to always feel that a hindi audience is not very open you know they don't watch films from other languages but now they started doing that and that's great to see yeah that hindi audiences are open to watching films from different languages and appreciating them and loving them um you know that's that's really nice to see that uh it speaks well for the hindi audience that they are uh you know wanting to experience entertainment from different languages i said this in china also when i went there when people ask me that chinese people are watching your films and all that so they ask me how about indians do they watch chinese films 
So I said, not really. We, so far, of course, we do. We have all of us are big fans of Jackie Chan. We've also write, uh, you know. So we, ha it's not that we haven't, yeah, yeah. but it's not a regular yeah, thing. Yeah. Especially the serious ones we've never. Certainly seen. not in theaters where you have the biggest business of a film from India coming out of China. That's not happened yet. But that's happened of Hindi films in China. You yeah. know, the Chinese audience has been open enough. Yeah. So I said, you know, it's it speaks for the Chinese audience yeah. that as people as as people they are open enough. To receiving material from other cultures and falling in love with it. That's right. such a beautiful quality. Right. So I think that uh, as we go along, as you said, you know, do you see this as a movement? I said, as I, as we go along, I'm hoping that this happens more and more. Right. That we get to see films from Bengal, from Maharashtra, Gujarat, you know, which are different languages, but they are entertaining the whole country. Right. And and that's what will be lovely to see as as it goes along. You have an affinity for One Bengal. Of the is that. The masala pan that was missing all of the regions in Hindi cinema for a long mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. uh, audiences were starved for it, especially the the, the Hindi belt audiences. Sure. And that when I say masala pan, I did not don't necessarily mean Amitabh punching one person and mm -hmm. sending him flying into the air, mm -hmm. but also the Salim Javid style of dialogues, the sure. rhetoric, the the slightly larger than life quality, the sentimentality, the melodrama, mm -hmm. the mother figure, all those things that made up what what like a mm -hmm. Divar, a Trishul, or whatever those movies. KJF, in fact, is very influenced by Correct. Divar and Trishul and all these films. Ah, I'm not uh, seeing in, in fact, uh, the boy starts off by uh, shining shoes. Uh, you know, like uh, like, Bachchan. In, uh, like Bachchan in yeah. uh, Divar. So, so uh, that's the theory that, that the audience... That is also true. Yeah, I agree with you. That is also true. I think in Hindi, we've also started making films. Perhaps a lot of us as creative people uh, are perhaps not so much in touch with what the larger mass of audience wants to uh, enjoy. Right. And as I agree with you, it need not be action. Like you said, it need not be action. Yeah. A film like Dangal has been uh, liked by a number of people across the world, in fact. Right, right. And there is no action, yeah, actually. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I mean, there's a sport. Yeah. Is, the sport of wrestling is not used as action. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a drama, essentially. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so you're right. I feel that if the story is universal, and I'll tell you what I mean by universal, by that I mean that emotionally it touches the hearts of a larger group of people who watches, watches it. So, like you said, a mother-son emotion is a very right. deep-rooted emotion. Yeah. So, somewhere I think in Hindi cinema, also we as creative people have started selecting perhaps films which are more and more niche. Now, I feel that every filmmaker has a right to choose what he wants to make and yeah. of yeah. course he should make what he wants yeah. to make. Yeah. No questions asked. But then we also should be aware that if I'm choosing the subject, it is a niche subject. I must be aware of that. I must not imagine I'm making a mainstream film, but actually I've selected a subject which is actually won't interest. And the people will not, must, most of the masses may not even relate to this topic. Right, right. So that has been happening also. You're right. I, I agree with that. So when you see uh, like many movies flopping, mm. but a Gangubai a Kathiawari or a Kashmir file succeeding, mm. So the, the masses, what it, what the, the audience is rather, mm. what is the kind of message that they're saying? What are they saying? Like, I want to see which kind of movie? Actually, the audience is, uh, is I think, happy to see any kind of movie. Okay. When you're promoting a movie, you kind of tell them what it is. Suppose I've made a action film. I will promote it as an action film. You will see the trailer also. So you'll come to know what genre it right, is. Right. But what I'm saying is, irrespective of genre, there has to be an emotional connect. The universality. Yeah. Emotional connect. Right. Even an action film. As an audience, I won't be interested in an action film if there's just action happening. Hmm. Look at Gajni. It's an action film. Yeah. But why is the action happening? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's happening because of a deep emotion that you feel as an audience of this real love story yeah. between yeah. Kalpana and Sanjay Singhania. And when Kalpana gets killed, the action Spoiler. is happening because of that. Yeah. And that I want to see as an audience because I'm Spoiler alert. Yeah, yeah. has been yeah. brutally murdered yeah. like that. Yeah. So, <laughs> that is essentially a love story. Real spoiler. Brutally murdered. <laughs> its heart is a love story. Kalpana is the heart of Gajni. Yeah. So, I'm saying this is how, you know, I think South films and South filmmakers still have that, you know, they are very connected to their audiences. Perhaps we have lost that connection. Perhaps we need to relook at that. Yeah. And the South films are teaching us that. So, uh, it's interesting that you just named the characters. Do you remember all the names of all the characters that you played? Uh, quite a few of them, yeah. yeah. I remember most of them. Do you remember the 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 one where you did with uh, Juhi Chala where you have this... Uh, Something kind of Chris Farley. Oh my god. You remember the one where you, 
Uh, yeah. No, I would not remember the name of that. No. Okay. What about the one where that's you said juice? Film, that's my my film. Act. My father produced and directed. Right. Mm. Wow. It's not a film that I, I was very happy with. So the films that I'm not very happy with, I try to forget. <laughs> 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 one of the things that makes a star a star, whether it's it's a Bachchan or the Three Khans or Shri Devi or the Madhuri Dixit or uh, Raj Kapoor, Devan, whatever. is the theatrical pull that they have that is mm. pretty much what because they say that i can pull that you many fill seats seat, fill seats mm-hmm. or as the american say you put butts in seats mm-hmm. you know so that's the start <laughs> we do yeah, say that that's one one of the <laughs> ways to measure stuff measure stuff mm-hmm. yeah that's like like at whatever the thing is at least the first day goes like yeah. it's really first weekend first, first weekend, day first yeah. day whatever mm-hmm. but now that 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 you know people the movies are kind of you know OTT has come into play mm. you know there are a lot of people kind of going either way mm. do you think that kind of stardom that you guys enjoy that is not just you guys when i say you guys i mean you the previous generations scapella across language across language you mean across language across language yeah. do you think it's going to become more difficult to see that magnitude of see stardom? that depends according to me we will be making a simple error you see when film there's nothing wrong with ott as a platform it's very nice and it will actually Compliment cinema. I'm not against it. No, no, no. Uh-huh. Just hear my whole answer. Uh-huh. I'm saying that OTT actually is not a challenge to cinema, but we are making it a challenge to cinema. What we are doing is we are saying that our films will release in theaters, but you don't really need to come because in a few weeks you can see it at home. Hmm. Right. How do you expect? That's why it to used to be three months theater? before you'd get it on OTT to come to the theater. When you already told me that just wait a few weeks, I'm 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 coming to your house. You don't have to come to the theater. <laughs> That is the error that according to the film point. industry is doing. Uh, I agree. Our films, of course, must come on OTT, and audiences should watch the film on OTT also. But we must give the audiences a clear choice. If I want to watch a film in cinemas, then I come to the cinema, and if I don't want to watch it, no problem. Right. Then I have to wait for six months for it to come to OTT, which is what is happening with. Then, then at least the audience has a choice and say, "Oh, I don't want to wait six months. I would rather watch it in the theater. I may have heard good things." Now what happens is if it's a good, the film is very good, and I come to know it's a great film, and I'm told please watch it. My answer today will be that it's okay. I'll just wait for two weeks. I'll watch it at home. Mm. Mm. That should not be the case. When a film is being appreciated, when the film is being loved, and it is in cinemas, and then you tell your friend it's a great film, go and watch it. He must feel that if I don't watch it, I will miss it. Yes, mm. agreed. So I think that is one big factor in the collection. Mir Khan speaking topic. truth here. Not just in Hindi, but in every language. The quicker you go into OTT, it doesn't make sense to me because you need to have a clear demarcation between the platforms. Right. You know, uh, and if that is not there, then common sense tells you that for economic reasons, mm-hmm. for bandwidth reasons, for time reasons, because when you go to a theater, you need time. Yeah. You need certain amount of money. Mm-hmm. You need certain amount of bandwidth to actually go there, book the ticket, and travel. If all of this is going to is all of this is required to come to a cinema, that is a given. Yeah. Then you cannot have it coming on OTT so fast. Mm-hmm. If it's coming so fast, then cinema doesn't stand a chance. Mm. Cinema doesn't stand a chance. So it's in our hands. As filmmakers, we have to decide. For example, I make sure that my films don't come on OTT for you know six months. I I try my level best to do that. For this reason only. So Dangal has not none of my films come in two weeks like that. and i'm trying to make that more and more you know and i'm hoping other people also do that because it's not just if one person does it this right the whole industry has to do the same thing mm-hmm. audiences across the country should feel that because cinema is a different experience obviously yeah you know you're watching in a dark space there are people around you it's a collective experience you laugh together you cry together you cheer together you know as opposed to sitting alone and watching it on your laptop or or on your phone also nowadays yeah It's not the same. If I'm going to enjoy myself, then I have to ask myself: Will I enjoy myself on a five-inch screen, or will I enjoy myself on a large screen yeah. with the sound? <clears throat> We work very hard on the mixing, you know. You know so it's it's the. I mean, I, I make films for cinema. Yeah. That's where you'll experience my work at its uh, how it is meant to be experienced. So I think that's a big difference as well. We sh- we need to not have come on OTT so fast, or we can make a film directly for OTT. I don't mind. That's yeah. You yeah. can make it straight for OTT. Now, if you're coming in theaters, 
then you have to have a distance. Mm. Now, allow me to present a counter argument. It's a really great I point. I agree. It's a great point. Uh, which may sound a little naive to you because I'm not a business. No, guy. no, sure. Please tell uh, me. Uh, you're a big star, Amir. Mm. So people will pay big money for your for your movies, mm. even if they come six months after OTT. Mm -hmm. But what I've been hearing from a lot of producers is that the later that they release on OTT, mm. when it's the second tier or third tier stars or whatever it is, the OTT price drops. Mm. The, the the price of the movie keeps dropping. They don't offer the kind of money that they do when uh, it's still hot, so to speak. The mm. film is still hot, so mm. to speak. So I think that's another reason that many films choose a shorter window uh, for what is your as a, somebody who's been in this business. I know, but I don't agree with that. I'm okay. sorry. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. See, because a film does well based on how well you've made it. If a film connects with people, it'll do well. Okay. And if it's on OTT or on cinema, if it's a good film and I, it connects with me, I want to watch it. Okay. If it's not available in cinema, I'll watch it on OTT. Right. And when the mouth of publicity spreads that it's a good film, wherever it is showing, I will watch it. So I feel it's the quality of the film and how well we make the films that will finally decide everything. That's the bottom That's line. Problem. That is the bottom line. My bad film will not do well just because I've used right. the number of weeks well. Right. It has to be a good film to begin with. Then the next decision comes about OTT, direct to theater and all that. That's the next level. Right. So what happens is that if a film doesn't do well, most producers feel okay, okay now that it's not done well, let me not hold on to another 12 weeks. Uh, let me, I'm getting some money, let me take the money and give it. Short term thinking. You will get that money right now. But in the long term, you're harming yourself. And the industry. And the industry as a whole. So our ability to work collectively, you know, we are doing Pani Foundation. Me and Kiran and Satya, we worked for the last six years, we we're working in rural Maharashtra. And we we're working in, in, in trying to help people with water and agriculture. The reason I'm telling you the story is that one of the key things that we as, as Pani Foundation do is we try to bring a village together. Because when a village comes together, it becomes strong. Right. And any problem in front of them, they are able to handle together, whether it's water or any other challenge. If they are together, they can handle it. And we've learned that. In Pani Foundation, we've seen that happening. It's the same thing. If something affects all of us, and I think only for myself, then that it's, won't help everyone. That, like you said, that short-term thinking. It's a short-term thinking. What is good for everyone is also good for me. Yeah. I have to understand that. Right. As an individual, not just in cinema, in life, I feel. Right. What is good for me may not be good for society. Correct? Right. So I must do what is good for society. Because eventually what is good for society will also be good for me. Yeah. You know, that's what I feel. So when you embarked on this Lal Singh Chadha uh, journey, mm. uh, there was, a, you just said, there was this gut feel that because you you, you heard Atul's script mm. and uh, it was, it just affected you a great deal. Mm. Now, after the whole movie's over and you've mm. seen it, that gut feel, does that still <laughs> stand? <laughs> so I'll tell you what I feel today, now that the film is complete and we are a few days away from the release. I have to say that when I heard Atul's script, and or for that matter, us as a team, Advait being the director, me being the producer and the entire team, when all of us had this, just the script in front of us, then Advait and all of us had a certain vision of what the film sh would like, well, what we would like it to end up being. And that was the start of the journey. Today, we have come to the end of the journey. When I look at the film, I think that what we set out to make, yes. we've come quite close to that. Nice. I'm very really happy that Advait as a director, though he's a young guy, he's just made, this is his second film, it's a tough one. Yeah. But despite that, he's managed to bring in the ship <laughs> quite well. And I think all of us as a team uh, very look up to him as a person who has led us in the right direction. And he's brought, uh, he's, he's made a film which all of us feel is very close to what we wanted to make. So we're very happy about that. Now, of course, we are waiting to see if the audience is interested in what we wanted to make, <laughs> we'll get to know in a few days. How do you, how do, you do this, Amir? How do you consistently, or almost always consistently, pick relatively untested, unknown talent and, and kind of identify a spark in them that was not visible earlier, but in your film, somehow it's magnified? Uh, I don't want to name names, but I think you know some what I'm talking about. You know, you relatively unknown directors, uh, relatively. Oh, unknown. okay, directors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, when I'm selecting, uh, you know, films, one of the things I look at is, of course, the script. It has to, you know, connect with me. One of the key things I look at is who's the director. Right. I give a lot of thought 
an importance to the fact that this director is the person who's going to lead this process. And that's a very important decision for me. If I'm not comfortable with the director, if I don't feel safe with the director, then I tend to hesitate. Okay. But for me to want to work with a director or to completely trust a director, I don't need the director to be 10 films old. No, that's what I'm Or yeah. should have given 20 hits. No, I, if I feel that, you, you, if I feel you're capable of telling the story and narrating this well, and if I have that confidence, that's good enough for me. So in my career, I worked with a lot of newcomers, yeah, new directors. Yeah. There's John Math Matthews, Farhan Rukhsar, Dilchata was the first yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Lagan, Ashutosh, uh, while that was not his first film, that was his first film that actually launched him into his career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was his third film, I think. Yeah. Uh, so yes, I have worked with a number of you know new directors. Untested is what I would like to say. Yeah, untested, yeah. yeah. But I, I test them. <laughs> I make sure. You give them an example. No, no, nothing uh -huh. like that. It's just by talking to the person. You know, I spend a lot of time with the people I'm about to work with. And when I get the confidence, I go for it. You once had a Mahabharat project. Dream. I had a dream. Dream. Okay. Yeah. You want to start in the project. Yeah, 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 yeah. But now, given that this is the season of mega projects mm -hmm. in every possible language, mm -hmm. everyone wants to go pan India and the budgets are just out there. Do you think it's time to re dream the dream? It feels like it's the right time. But, you know. Mahabharat, you cannot time it at all. It has to be beyond that. When you're making Mahabharat, you're not making a film. You're doing a yagna. And you have to approach it like that. You don't approach it like you're making a film. It's not a film. It's much deeper than that. And I don't know whether I'm ready for that. <laughs> so, let me see. But it's something that really excites me. Nice. So, you still... It's there, some kind of yes, mind. Yes, yes, it is very much there. Right. But uh, I'm afraid to bring it out into the fore because I don't know whether I'm ready. See, Mahabharat will never let you down. You might let Mahabharat down. <laughs> okay. So I don't want that to happen. Right. Yeah. So I hope that that uh, Lal Singh Chadha is another success for you. But, uh, you know, you've also kind of at times gone wrong in your calculation, sure. like in sure. Thugs of Hindustan. Yes, yes. Uh, so <laughs> Tell us about your shitty yeah. thugs. <laughs> do you kind of have this enormous process of what went wrong? Oh, yes. I, I give a lot of thought to what we what went wrong. What, what Because you see, a, a film that doesn't work is an opportunity. It's a great opportunity to learn. Because when you make mistakes, you learn, you learn exactly what has gone wrong. And you know, it's so all... I'm wherever I am today, it's not because of my successes, it's because of my failures. In the early years of my career, I don't know whether you're aware. So, Mere Ho is the name of the film. Yeah. But you asked me the name of the character. Okay, yeah. So, Mere Ho I remembered, but you I, asked me the character. Okay, I can't remember the name of the film. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay, yeah. So, uh, Suraj. Is the character called Suraj? I think so, yeah. Just look up <laughs> online. If I'm not mistaken, Tum Mere Ho, the character is called Suraj. That would be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I hold my failures very close to my heart and because I have, those are the ones that have struggled the most. Those are the ones that have not succeeded. Those are the ones in which I've, you know, uh, Shiva. Sorry, it was an S I knew. <laughs> <laughs> Shankar so Shiva. Many years close yeah, enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But, uh, and you did say that you like to forget the films that you. Yeah. 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 But, but failures really teach you a lot. And I think that. Um, so I value my failures a lot. And uh, regarding Lal Singh, I mean, we'll get to know now, but I feel that I'm just hoping that it's a film that. You know, touches people's hearts uh, in the way that it touched our hearts when when we were making the film. Nice. And if that happens, I'll be happy. <laughs> yeah. So really looking forward to the film. Yeah. I'm watching it on an IMAX screen. Okay, thank you. Uh, because uh, you know, just the, the, the I wish we got an IMAX the screen. That appealed to me about Forrest Gump was how it kind of took the scenic route and went all yeah. over America. And yeah. you've done this whole Kashmir to Kanyakumari. Series. Yeah, it, it's, it's a large screen experience. Large screen, yeah. I think so, it's a large so I think screen. I want to see it on a larger screen. Great. I hope so, you like it. Thank you so much. Yeah. And all the best. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ha. What? Ha. 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 <laughs> it's always great when people you admire actually seem like intelligent yeah. um, filmmakers or artists, and they really, really care. Yeah. Because you could tell. He's exactly how I anticipated he would be. 
articulate, caring, very introspective, introspective, intelligent. Um, and yeah, I fully agree. I didn't like it when movie theaters and OTT platforms changed availability of movies on OTT after they left theaters. Yeah, obviously they did it for for COVID and yeah. that, that that changed. The thing I do like is like let's say it does a theatrical run and then they put it for a full price. So like if I uh I wanted to watch everything everywhere all at once right when it came out, it was like 20 bucks. So it was still an admission ticket. Right. For me to be able to see it, it wasn't like it's on Netflix or anything. That's a great idea. That is, I think, a, a happy medium. I agree. If I still want, if I, because I can't go anywhere. I, <laughs> I have two newborn twins and a toddler. I can't right. go anywhere unless it's an Indian film because it's my job. Um, but if I want to watch current stuff, I want to still support it. But the only way I can do it is at home. I am okay paying the full price admission ticket absolutely at home, so you can still get the support uh, for and then, that. And if and you then, want to watch it again, same thing. And you then have to get six a ticket later. Obviously, you can Correct. still drop it for free on right. Netflix or wherever you're dropping it. Right. But yeah, that I 100 percent because I, I just I think it was just announced Fafa's film, even though obviously it's a much smaller film, so it's very yeah. different. And so not a lot of people probably got an opportunity to see it in theaters, right? Which is unfortunate. But that is now on Amazon. Just what. Two, two weeks later. Two weeks later. Yep. Uh, very different. That one's a very small film. Unfortunately, it didn't get a wide distribution. Yeah. And that's its own issue. But like stuff like RRR, I think RRR waited till May, I think is when it, it dropped. So it was March to May. So it was two months. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it did well for it. Yeah. And it's still running theatrically here. <laughs> I, I think two months is actually good. I think anything beyond three is a little too long. Well, he, once it's left screens, not re, not three months or six months after it's been released. After it's left screens. After it leaves screens, two months is fine. You don't need to go much longer than that. I think if you go much longer than that, you do lose. You risk the momentum. Yeah, yeah. the momentum. Even make it, you know, a month, but nothing nothing shorter than a well, you're month. You're going to see how it is, because obviously he just signed a deal. He already got a deal with Netflix, I believe it, it was. That's it's going to be six months mm -hmm. for his for Lao Sing uh, yeah. however you say the, the the name it's going to be six months yeah. before that's on and they paid him handsomely they <laughs> did I think he's like already made back the budget or something like just based based off of that it idea used to be if you didn't see a movie when it was in theaters you didn't see the movie yeah <laughs> what a what an awful world. <laughs> Or then you'd have to wait, like if once it left, because movies used to go to um, Showtime and HBO, one of the first cable movie channels. But it was a long time after a movie left theaters before that thing. So you had to go see it. In the yeah, if you didn't see it in theaters, you didn't see the movie. I, I do think it's a, um, and obviously there's many different reasons why, especially India does it the way they do, because we've always like it goes on OGT so fast, and I think yeah. COVID even sped that process up even more. It did two weeks. Yeah. For a massive film, yeah, to go from seeing theaters. So obviously the economics for a lot of people, it just makes sense. They're like, ah, oh, this isn't like a KGF or RRR. I'm just gonna wait two weeks. It'll be on Netflix, right? Why would they go to the theater? Absolutely. I, we can say you should go to the theater and support it, right? But that people's economics are different. Yep. They like I can afford a Netflix subscription. I can't afford right however many rupees it is to go to the theater this month. It's just I, I feel like he's right. I feel like they're making it really hard on themselves with the f how fast they're putting stuff on OTT. I agree. Yeah. There's people, example, there's people I know who for both the movies Maverick and Elvis, who they went and saw it with me based on word of mouth and my recommendation mm. because they didn't want to wait because they knew they'd have to wait when it left, there'd be this limbo land mm -hmm. before it went to OTT and they wanted the theatrical experience. So... Yeah, I agree, yeah. and there should be uniformity. Yeah, I wish I could see the the Top Gun in in theaters. I just so I, I won't be able to, and so that'll be one that I will be having to pay nineteen ninety nine for, <laughs> and I'll watch it on my big screen with my surround sound. It'll be fine. But um, yeah, I, it was really insightful. I actually really enjoyed this interview. He's I would love obviously be able to talk to Amir. Yeah, at some point, and I people have asked because there's like um, I know Jabby interviewed Alia. 
And then there's another one, that another reaction channel. I think there is a smaller one, but they interviewed him. Mm. But they did it at a junket. And so they got, oh, okay. they got about five few minutes, minutes yeah. five to ten. I don't, even though it'd be great to talk to him here for five to ten minutes, I would much rather hold out and wait to talk to him for our allotted amount of time that we like to talk to people for. Yeah. We like to talk to people 30 for like 30 minutes, minutes to an hour. Yeah, easy. It's just so we can get a deeper conversation. Yeah. Even though I, it would be great to talk to Amir for five, 10 minutes. It would, but... I just, I, f- I feel like if if I'm given one opportunity in my life to talk to Amir, I want it to be substantial. I agree. So that that's, gives you a little introspective of wh- why I don't do press junkets. Um, also, we're not there as well. In India. Yeah. It would be easier. Have you ever done like an interview at a press junket? Have no. you ever been in the interview at a press junket? No. It's got to be a hard job. Got to be. Because they're exhausted. It, yeah. It's just They've non-stop. just done a hundred other interviews. Yeah. But uh, 10,000 other people. Yep. Anyways. Just yeah, there you go. We're looking forward to it. We're going to boycott it first day, first show. Uh, let us know if you're going to go boycott it as well. Uh, first day, first show. Let us know. <laughs>